little bit about his background before he came to Southern, so you get a sense that he didn't just drop on the planet here. <laughs> he had a beginning. I'm not going to tell you when he was born, but trust me, this man is timeless right here. <laughs> so <laughs> I will tell you that he began teaching academy at the academy level in 1959. Right. So, and I'll say another thing. If you want to know about U.S. presidents, talk to him, because he can tell you about quite a few. So. That's excellent. So he began teaching in 1959. He got married in 1962. And in 1963, he and his wife moved to Singapore. He would end up teaching there a total of 14 years in Singapore, but not all at once. He kind of broke that up a little bit. So he spent um, nine years while he was teaching there. It was at the academy level, and five years was at the college level. I hope I got all these facts right. but. All right, so in between though, he came back and he attended Andrews for a few years and then he went back in 1969 and resumed teaching. Then he returned to the United States and he taught at Blue Mountain Academy. Did anyone here go to Blue Mountain Academy? Okay, I know my husband attended Blue Mountain Academy for a while, so he was a teacher there for, um, for eight years. And then he went back to Singapore. He seemed to have this thing about Singapore. He just kept, you know, like, repeat and repeat. Just kept getting repeat here. So he went back to Singapore in 1982, and finally came back to Southern in 1987. And then I feel like he found a home. Something about Southern broke the Singapore thing, so he stopped going back after he got here. So I think we did a good job. So he's been here at Southern since 1982, I mean, 19, 1987. Um, and he earned a doctorate in English in 1999, and he's taught for the English department and a great deal for the SJC since then. He retired in 2004, but he continued teaching through fall 2019, last semester. He was actually going to teach this semester, and I ended up having to take one of his classes and give it to one of the other professors whose class did not make due to uh, the enrollment numbers. So John graciously, Dr. Keyes graciously, stepped aside and gave up his class to this other professor. And that is something about Dr. Keyes that I have found all along, and that is a graciousness and a willingness to help and support at all times and to do whatever he can. So it's time to hear some words that people have to say. We're going to start with former students <coughs> of his, and then we're going to move forward to colleagues. So Dr. O'Connor will come up to introduce that part. And then I'll come back with tributes from the deans, and then we'll let Dr. Keyes say something if he wishes to by then. You need to know something about this lady. <laughs> she was accepted at a school that's harder to get in than Harvard. Oh, <laughs> yes, MIT. But her father said, Katie. I want you to go to Southern and meet a nice young man. <laughs> she was that kind of student, cooperative. She met this nice young man, and uh, she's, she's a genius. And uh, if you want help with research, go to this woman. I go to her. <laughs> red is my shirt. <laughs> Thank you. But today we are here to honor Dr. Keyes. <laughs> He's our adjunct professor of public speaking, including the honors public speaking class. This gifted professor and dedicated, experienced teacher has been treasured and beloved by his students. Dr. Keyes, it's been a minute or two since I was a student in your public speaking class as a freshman, but I still remember the lessons you taught. Eye contact, speak clearly, <laughs> smile. More importantly, I remember how you made each one of us feel noticed, loved, and accepted. When I returned to Southern as a faculty member, you were the first to welcome and accept me as a colleague, to mentor and support me, and to help me find my place in God's work. Thank you. I'm not the only student you have blessed. Here are a few thoughts that others have shared. Ashley Blake, 
writes, Dr. Keyes was one of the most helpful professors I've had at Southern. He was always willing to accommodate to anything we needed, and he truly cared about whether we understood the material or not. He made my 8 a.m. speech class <laughs> much better by telling us stories about his unique life experiences. Sammy Oltz remembers. Dr. Keyes was a great teacher, and I had a good time in his class. He was funny, he was nice, he was an encouraging teacher, and I'm glad I took speech from him. Walter Dadis notes, Dr. Keyes was present, intentional, kind, and inquiring. He spent considerable time and effort familiarizing himself with his students, which effectively created a dynamic, safe learning environment. I believe that's the vision God had in mind for this Christian institution, and Dr. Keyes embodies this principle. He writes, thank you, Dr. Keyes for remembering my name. Mm -hmm. Julia Klaska writes, Dr. Keyes is a God-fearing man who is supportive and encouraging as a professor. Ben Hyder shares, speaking in front of people is very uncomfortable for me. I don't know if I could have made it through public speaking without Dr. Keyes' help. Another student recalls, the best way I can describe Dr. Keyes is that he is a nutcracker. <laughs> when I first entered his class, I was a very hard shell. I only knew a selected number of people, and I don't think I even planned on getting to know anybody else. Dr. Keyes, on the first week of the semester, took a hard crack and cracked my shell. Since then, from quirky comments to funny analogies, he cracked my introvertedness. His constant reminder about how communication and public speaking is crucial really stuck with me, and I still think about it to this day. Dr. Keyes has been described by his students as amazing, very kind and effective, open-minded, willing to help, organized, patient, humble, encouraging, motivating, good at giving compliments, making his classes feel comfortable speaking. Thank you. <laughs> Caring, delightful, inviting, friendly, inspirational, calm, always available, clear in what he wanted for every paper and quiz, reasonable, <coughs> a phenomenal professor in every way. Turns out, Dr. Bob Young, Senior Vice President for Academic Administration here at Southern, was once a student of Dr. Keith's. <laughs> Dr. Young writes, I want to add my voice to that of others who are expressing their appreciation for the many years of service in the classroom at Southern and for your many, many, many years of service to Adventist education. You have been a great blessing to the many students who have come to your classes. Many of them express how they learn to speak without fear. How you established a kind, friendly, considerate atmosphere they also appreciated your expertise and encouragement when they were fearful or unsure. For all of this, thank you. The many students who have been in your classroom, including me when I was in high school, owe you a debt of gratitude for your lifelong devotion <coughs> to your students and their learning. <coughs> One student summed it all up this way. If I could, I would take all my classes from him. <laughs> Dr. Keyes, you taught us that words are important. Words matter. Someday, in heaven, there will be many stars in your crown. One for each life 
you have touched. Each person who is there because of your influence. In that place, each of us will have time to tell you our story and how the words you spoke to us moved us closer to Christ. But for now, speaking for all of us, your stars, thank you. Please join me in honoring Dr. John. That's required before this. <laughs> thank Dr. Rachel Williams Smith for affording me this opportunity to give tribute to my colleague, my friend, my mentor. I continue flying through those years, and then I, the end of 2003, I wonder whether or not to continue teaching or to go and finish my doctorate. Dr. Keyes encouraged me to go and finish my doctorate, and for that I say thank you. Dr. Keyes has impacted many lives, and unbeknown to you, Dr. Keyes, you impacted mine too. For that, I say thank you. First interview I had with Dr. Fulker Henning when I came. Uh, my husband was called to be the dean of the School of Music, and I was just finishing off a master's in communication. We hadn't even moved here when one night I remember I was cooking spaghetti, and uh, my onions are browning, and the phone rings, and this is back in the day where you're you're tethered to the wall, and so I'm I'm cooking, and hello, and it's Dr. Keys, and he says. I see that you are finishing a master's. Would you like to come and teach speech? Now, my onions are burning, and I'm thinking, what? Uh, who is this? What? Because we hadn't even moved here yet. So that was my first introduction to Dr. Keyes. He was always looking for uh, ways of encouraging people and hiring uh, speech faculty. He was a speech, the speech coordinator. And so when I met him, it was just, it was such an honor and a, and a pleasure. Dr. Keyes is, Keyes is one of the most knowledgeable people people that I know. He is uh, an avid researcher. I have sat in staff meetings where we ask a question, just kind of random. The next staff meeting he has done a lot of research and you know probably two or three hours of research and comes back with many answers. So he, he loves learning and he loves, he's never stopped learning. He is a researcher. He's extremely helpful if you need help Dr. Ancana, he helped you, he's helped me, he's extremely uh, helpful. And one of the things that I appreciate about, appreciate about him the most is how optimistic he is. Things are always going well, people are always doing well, he's, he's very optimistic, and he's been a great help, not only professionally, but personally. Um, just a very quick story, we had a huge limb come down in our, in our yard, and, and I do not own chainsaw but you know who does <laughs> so I was mentioned I'm at the copy machine and kind of how are things going well you know I got this huge limb well I'll just come over and help you and so he and Barbara came over do you remember that oh my goodness he worked forever to haul the limb away I was forever grateful so he's a friend he's a researcher he's very optimistic and he is an encourager so if you took a class from him or not I've never taken a class with him but he's a, the consummate encourager and so, like Katie, I know that there will be many stars in his crown because it's just, he, he brightens a room when he comes in. Thank you, both. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Janita Heron, and I used to be the office manager here. And so one of the things I used to try to do was beat Dr. Keyes here in the morning. Very rarely did that ever happen. But it was kind of nice because somebody had come in, turned on with the lights, warmed up the copier, so I wasn't walking in cold, and there was somebody here to welcome me instead of me being the one to open everything up. So I always loved seeing your truck out there. I knew that, I knew that you were here, and that made me feel good and made me feel safe. 
And I can't think of all of the speeches that this man has heard <laughs> in his career. Wow. How many times did you hear the speech on the advantages of drinking water? <laughs> <laughs> but I love him. I'm sure you do. I'm sure you do. And that's what's so cool about him is because he can hear it for the umpteenth millionth time and he can still be positive and he can still be paying attention and it was still, this was wonderful. I cannot think of anybody who could sit and listen to the same thing all the time for so many years and still have something positive to say about it better than Dr. Keyes. And then I think about all of those classes, five speech classes in one semester, times 20 students times all of those speeches that you heard, all of those conferences that you had, all of those students who have been impacted, and that was just one year, <laughs> times it by the number of years that he's been in the classroom. So as it's been said, hundreds, probably thousands of students have benefited from you being there for them that day at that class. Speaking of a limb down in your yard, um, <laughs> seven years ago, our daughter was getting married, and again, in the office conversation, you know, how are things going, and, and I was just kind of overwhelmed with all the things that I needed to do, and I see a head nodding over here, you understand that, and you think, oh man, how am I going to get this done, how am I going to get your list, you know, and, and so yard work was one of the things that I had on the list, and who should come over but Dr. and Mrs. Keys to come do yard work for at my house for the wedding weekend. And I am forever grateful to that, for that. And if I could have afforded it, I would have just paid them to move on site and be, and be there every day. But that was not the extent of what they did to help me. For a number of years, I was the Com Club advisor. And we used to have, and I don't know if you still do this or not, in the fall for our, our um, Vespers, we would have a bonfire, and it was at their house. He built a bonfire pit in his yard. He put tiles around it. He made it specifically for the students at the School of Journalism, and they hosted this year after year after year. He started, he made the tile thing after the first year. He improvised a fire pit, and it was the, it was the hood of an engine turned upside down with the wood inside of it and we all sat around it was a bitterly cold night we all sat around it and I remember people putting their shoes on it and it actually <laughs> melting where the, their shoes had been so then he made one and I don't know if it's still in your yard or not you've taken it up okay but anyway they hosted that for years after we moved out of their yard to the to the student center they still came and helped me do that. Mrs. Keys baked cornbread. She helped with the, the soup, the chili that we served. She was there setting up. He was there setting up. He hauled wood for the fire there. He tended the fire. He didn't leave until the fire was out. He was there always as well as, as Mrs. Keys. And you got two for the price of one when you got him. So anyway, those are just a few of my memories of the appreciation that I have had and the privilege it's been for me to have worked with you, to have known you outside of the classroom and outside of the office, and the chocolate is still in my office whenever you want to come by. I love you guys. Bye. The dean's having something to say. So Dr. Keyes has served under four deans, or worked with four deans, myself included, and so all four have something to say to you. So, and I think you were in trying to be yourself. Is that you there? No? Okay. All right, so you have learned how to work well with students over time and have done an amazing job. So I'm starting the order in which they've served. So the first one is Walker Henning, and he sent this word. Here's my tribute to Dr. John Keyes. What can I say? Dr. John Keyes is one of a kind, a highly educated, insightful, detail-oriented, humble man who consistently carries more than his share of the load, always willing to teach yet another speech class and do it well, ready with sage counsel when asked, a mentor, a role model, a friend. Thank you for being who you are. Mm -hmm. Dr. Linda Potter Crumley wrote, you in the School of Journalism and Communication have good friends in John and Barbara Keyes. 
You may have sung around the fire, campfire vesper uh, at their house. You may have snacked at a table full of food and Barbara nearby to lend her help. You may have studied in the class that Dr. Keyes taught, but do you know them? I remember a student who couldn't wake up. I mean, I remember a student who could not, would not live up to his parents' expectations, but he found his own path because Dr. Keyes listened and believed in him. I remember coming to Southern as a new faculty member and later as a dean, not sure how to do all that must be done. But Dr. Keyes supported my efforts and questioned my missteps in a gentle, tactful way that helped me succeed. I am forever grateful. Dr. Keyes lives in freedom, exploring the open words of scholars with his keen intellect. He lives in balance, keeping his body, mind, and soul active and strong. He lives in community, loving Barbara, his family, his neighbors, his church, the SJC, the university, and many, many people from all over the world who stay in contact. Most of all, Dr. Keyes lives for Jesus, and today we honor him for what God has done through him to bless the SJC and all of us. Enjoy graduating to a new phase of life, Dr. Keyes, but keep thinking and keep learning and keep being our friend. We appreciate you. Mm -hmm. That's from Linda Potter. And actually, before her was <laughs> Greg Rumsey, and he wrote these words. In 2001, I came with my wife Shirley to interview for a faculty position at the SJC. Dr. Key saw me sweating it out the last few minutes before I went in to do the dreaded classroom teacher teaching demo that was done in the, in the Mac lab. He said to me, relax, we like both of you. <laughs> that, encouraging, that encouraging statement immediately eased my anxiety. It also uh, uh, epitomizes the persona that John Keyes has brought to his own teaching for the past three decades plus in the school. He was ever affirming, ever kind, ever a gentleman with those students, uh, with whom students and colleagues felt safe. I am always impressed with how thoughtful Dr. Keyes prepared for his classes, how thoughtfully, and not only with solid content, including the most well-developed syllabus I have ever seen, <laughs> but also by learning the names of every student in his class the very first week of the semester. Furthermore, I value his wise insights and counsel as I dealt with the issues of department leadership. In all of this, John Keyes has lived the Christ-like qualities of building others up and interacting graciously with his colleagues and students. He knows, he truly knows how to speak a word of truth in love, Ephesians 4.15. Thank you, God, John, for your friendship, professional excellence, and loyal support. With admiration and gratitude, Greg Rumsey, retired communication professor. And then for me, I'm not gonna read a statement, I just have notes. <laughs> I want you to know some of the many things that I appreciate about you, Dr. Keyes. The abundance of reading material that you have given me. Whenever there's been an issue, um, a problem, a challenge, I can count on it that if you get word of it, I'm gonna receive something in my inbox <laughs> to help me to understand and deal with it and give me another perspective. I appreciate that and I appreciate the information that you provided me on so many thought-provoking topics. I appreciate the meticulous inspection of every student's record prior to the beginning of the semester to understand where they're coming from and what they need when they enter your classroom. And I appreciate you calling me and alerting me to potential needs, issues, or problems so that I can be on board to help or support you in that effort. I appreciate the incredible detail that you put into every aspect of your class in the planning and the delivery. Nothing. There was nothing that was not ever thought out in advance. I know you're not supposed to use two double negatives, but I have to in regard to this. There was nothing that was not ever thought out in advance, and that was amazing to me. I appreciate you spotting the needs, potentials, and problems of every semester beyond just what was in your classroom, but more broadly whenever you can see it in terms of the SJC, and letting me know in advance things that I needed to think about before they ever came up. And he did it so quietly and tactfully, and nobody would have ever known, but he was guiding from behind, and I really appreciate it. And one of the things I appreciate the most was an email that you sent me on a day when you couldn't have known it, but it was probably one of my lowest points here, and I was really struggling with the thought of what do I actually bring or contribute, 
And I don't know why you sent me this email, but she said, you know, I've been thinking about it, and the thing that you contribute is the best gift of all, you love others. And for somehow, with your experience and the years that you've been here, the way you ordered that was so uplifting, and it made me feel like, yes, even the little things, even if they're not profound, make a difference, and that people can tell that. So I thank you for those words. Thank you for being who you've been here. I'll miss your ready, warm smile, your happy, welcoming wave in the morning as I pass by your door, and our brief, very early morning chats around the copier machine. But I'm glad that I got to meet you. I'm glad I got to work with you. And I'm super glad that you're really close by. In fact, you're just a phone call away. So thank you in advance for being there in the days to come. Thank you. I looked around when I came in to see if I knew anyone, and I see some faces. She says it was long ago, but look how young she is. <laughs> and guess what? She's getting all A's in a doctoral program right now. Uh, you couldn't expect anything else. <coughs> um, again. And there's another all-A student I had. And another one. This one happens to be my grandson, but he's still an all A student. <laughs> I had his mother and his father in class and my and the aunt too. The family I told my family, do not take my classes. I said that as a father. But as a teacher I can't say who comes to class. <laughs> Someone else? That's really special. I had his grandson in my class, Dr. Chen. Dr. Chen was with the National Institutes of Health, one of the directors. Uh, if you want to get to know somebody who knows things, get to know Dr. Chen. He's uh, somebody, and he's taking somebody's class. Whose class is Scott Ball? Oh, Dr. <laughs> Ball's. Uh, Class. He stays in school, too. Uh, I ask, who is this young speaker, Rachel, and the name Beaver? Did you have some uh, other family members here earlier? Because I've had some beavers in <laughs> class. And maybe you have some relatives that you don't know about. You gave some advice. I'd like to give some more advice that I always give to my speech classes, and it's not about speaking. I want to tell you how to get all A's. One minute. I'm a C plus student. I determined that on my PhD, I was going to be a four point student. How to do that? Well, everybody can do it. I did it. If I can do it, you can do it. Drink the water <laughs> that you need. Eat a balanced diet. Exercise regularly. And the most, Im besides the spiritual, and most importantly, and I've, in my 32 years here, I've had five students who've done it. Get at your age, nine hours and 15 minutes of sleep a night, and I'll guarantee you, you're a candidate for all A's. It worked for me as a, just an ordinary. It is not all that studying. In fact, Loma Linda tried an experiment. They had their medical students, they divided them into two groups. One group, they told to study, study, study. The other group, they said, go play tennis. Who did better? The tennis players. A, keep a balance in life. I always started my class with a, a quiz, and then I followed it, and I have a quiz ready, but my time is up. But uh, then I followed it with the scripture, and the first one was all, do you remember the first one? 
let, let the words let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight O Lord my strength for today and my redeemer for eternity if you will follow that you will be successful in any speech because it's more, more important to please God than it is to please me. Amen. Thank you for all the wonderful things you have said. You know, I would like to be like Frost. The woods are lovely, dark, and deep. But we have promises to keep and miles to go before we sleep and miles to go before we sleep. Well, I'm here to talk about food. <laughs> yes. We're going to have a good lunch together after this. First, um, I have known the Keys since I was three years old. Oh. You guys, any of you have friends that become family? Yeah. That is them. They're my other parents. And they have played a huge role for a long time in my life. And I'm very, very grateful. Um, We've shocked how many bushels of corn together, snapped how many green beans, we have peas, our favorite thing, so going on family vacations together, good times, but we live close enough to really become like family, and I'm really thankful for that. I would just like to say, Dr. Keyes is amazing, but what is the saying behind every great man? and what a team you guys have been. 